Welcome to Jay Hudgens Tech Tips channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to program a Grandstream HT818 VoIP gateway to work with most alarm panels without getting that pesky comfail error message that always appears on the alarm panel. As most of you watching know, fire control panels do not communicate well with VoIP lines. Nope, they prefer POTS lines. However, with POTS lines being faded out these days, you want to have a dependable VoIP product that can communicate with a fire panel consistently, or you're going to need to pay the expensive cellular protocol cost to communicate with your panel. And after, after years of frustration trying to use VoIP lines with fire panels, I finally tweaked the Grandstream HT818 to communicate with the fire panels, enabling the completed proverbial handshake, or kiss off, so to speak and that's going to eliminate the com fail errors. In today's video, we will be using core dial SIP trunks provisioned into a Grandstream HT818. This will also work with all Grandstream HT models or GXW models. In today's video, I'm going to focus more on the setting changes or tweaks of an already configured SIP trunk. To see how to program a SIP trunk on a Grandstream HT818, Click on the link in the description to watch my video, How to Program the Grandstream HT818 SIP Analog Gateway. Before we get started, I want to tell you about a company that specializes in almost everything telecom. This company is US Tech. For years, US Tech has been an industry leader in telephone systems, SIP protocol gateways, voice over IP, and UC client. U.S. Tech has a reputation of giving over-the-top tech support, and right now U.S. Tech is giving away free Yaling VoIP phones for every seat that you sign up for. They can even pre-program a system and have it shipped right away while they stay on standby for any reasonable assistance necessary. Is your phone bill too high? Let them drastically reduce your monthly bill using SIP protocol. Just click on the link in the description below to get a free quote and even a callback if needed. That's U.S. Tech, your one-stop shop for everything telecom. They do it all for you. Okay, after you have configured your SIP gateway and registered it to your SIP servers, the first thing you want to do is click on the Profile 1 or Profile 2 tab. Now I'm going to show, tell you why. Um, if you look at the FXS ports over here, you'll see you'll see that I have multiple SIP trunks configured into this gateway. I have two lines in a PBX system. I have an alarm one line, an alarm two line. I have a credit card machine and I have a fax line. You'll notice the fax line is on profile two because profile two is going to be connecting with a different server than profile one. So if you're using this just for an alarm line, you can use profile one because it's not gonna affect any other lines that you're using. Uh, see these profiles here. But since I'm using telephone lines in a PBX system on this gateway to talk over, it's not going to work well doing the tweaking on Profile 1. These settings really diminish talk path quality, but really enhance the communication clarity between devices, so you don't want to make these setting changes on lines that you will be talking over. Okay, the only setting changes we're going to be doing today is on Profile 2 tab. So go ahead and scroll down and you'll see my setting changes are pretty much at default here. Uh, the first setting change we want to make sure that Keep Alive is on. Uh, the regist register, exp exp register expiration is set back down to two. So keep scrolling down. Allow incoming SIP messages from SIP proxy only. We're going to click yes on that. Okay, the first real setting change we want to make is for preferred DTMF method. You see how this is basically set up for talk path for telephone lines that you, could, you would talk over. But for alarm lines, we want to change this. We want to make priority one audio in audio, we want to make 
priority two, this RFC, and priority three is gonna be the SIP info. So let's go ahead and make those changes now in audio, RF, and then SIP info. We wanna to go to disable DTMF negotiation, and we're gonna click yes, use above, DTMF order without negotiation. So click that yes, and make sure these, the first one up here is in audio. Okay, after you've done that, we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna disable call waiting. Um, sometimes I like to make these ring timers a little longer. I'll boost this up to 90. Uh, I'll boost this up to, let's say 40 but that's not necessary for what we're trying to accomplish today with the alarm panels. But what is necessary is our next step, and that is you go down to preferred vocoder, and what you wanna do where it says use first matching vocoder in 200 okay, we wanna click yes, and every choice, one through eight, we wanna make VCMU. We're gonna change all those to VCMU. And we're gonna change the voice frames per TX. We're gonna make that, we're gonna bump it up to 10 instead of two. And that's all we're gonna do there. Then we're gonna scroll back down. You're gonna make sure that loop current disconnect is on yes. All right, right here where it says gain TX, that's transmit. The transmit we're gonna put at minus four dB. I'm sorry, we're gonna put that at minus six dB. And receive, we're gonna put it at minus four dB. So minus six dB for transmit, minus four dB for receive. And for disable line echo canceller, we're gonna click yes. For disable network echo suppressor, we're gonna click yes. And that's all that we need to do for our alarm panels. We're gonna then click apply. So in review, the three major changes you want to make on your Grandstream Gateway, on Profile 1 or Profile 2, whichever one you're gonna be using, is first, right here, preferred DTMF method. We wanna make that audio. You want it to look like that. You wanna click this. You wanna scroll down to preferred vocoder. You wanna click yes there. And all of these you want to make PCMU. You wanna bump this up to 10 seconds, or I'm sorry, yeah. Transmit, you want to, you wanna bump voice frames per TX up to 10. You wanna scroll down and make your gain, put it at minus six dB, your receive at minus four dB. You wanna click yes, yes, disabling line echo and network echo. You wanna scroll down and apply. Go back and check and make sure the settings changed and if they did, you probably wanna reboot your gateway. It looks like everything changed, settings changed. Everything looks good. And that's all there is to it.